Raven, and I am his vengeance! Ah, the Vikings, a seafaring, vicious people who spread their trade and influence across the oceans. The first European men to come to North America and worshippers of the Nordic mythology. Such legends will be missed, and we will see them again in Valhalla. <laughs> Needless to say, I was excited about the Northmen. It's directed by Robert Eagers and written by Shion and Robert Eagers. The story of Amleth directly inspired Shakespeare's Hamlet, which directly inspired The Lion King, so don't be surprised if you notice similar beats from a storytelling perspective. Spoilers aside, the story can be simply summed up as... I will avenge you, father! I will save you, mother! I will kill you, Fiona! I will avenge you, father. I will save you, mother. I will kill you, Fiona. Yep. That just about does it. I really like this movie. Its presentation is on par with Robert Eager's other works. He solely focuses on period pieces, which I think is absolutely fine. He knows he's excellent at them, so don't fucking stop, man. The Northman is undoubtedly the most mainstream movie he's ever done. However, it doesn't have the glossiness or safety that mainstream movies will give you. Almost everyone's hands are dirty, and this is a society where it's kill or be fucking killed. You have to clear your mind of all levels of morality before going into this movie. It's a film that has some really terrible people with misconstrued morals, and that's also why I love this movie. Simply put, it isn't afraid to pull its punches in regards to how Viking culture operated. The Vikings were very brutal people, however, their brutality and mythology is somewhat intoxicating to people even today. I really appreciate Robert Eagers for his passion towards filmmaking. Every movie he's done feels like a passion project by somebody who wants to make a movie as authentic as possible to the history that he's portraying, regardless if he's got to make dialogue near inaudible due to the language, accents, or dialects, or changing the aspect ratio of his film to set an overall tone. I appreciate his devotion to Nordic mythology in this. He blends that realm of fiction and fantasy very well. Like take the Valkyrie for example. People complained about the fact that the Valkyrie had braces but they didn't do their research and had no understanding that some Valkyries had grooves in their teeth, likely due to enamel solely to look cool or intimidating, or in the incorporation of Natalik, a game the Vikings once played. Apparently people are review bombing this movie because it isn't a Chad dude bro Viking action movie? If you're expecting a Viking war movie, you need to check your expectations at the door. It's more a revenge tale with our protagonist Amleth just being a fucking menace to his uncle's village by working his way up the ranks to Samuel L. Jackson's position in Django Unchained and taking every opportunity he can to haunt this man. This movie doesn't have the most violent of Viking violence, wow say that five times fast, however it doesn't need to be that way. There are some very graphic and gory moments but that's all they are, moments. The movie is instead driven by the plot and your investment in the protagonist and what he's striving to achieve. I can understand if some people may feel cheated by the trailer. This certainly wasn't the movie I was expecting, but then I rewatched The Lighthouse and The Witch and said, No shit. I don't blame A24 at all. They gotta get asses in the theater, so hopefully this opening weekend will be a hit. This movie is excellently paced. It truly hits that Goldilocks zone, as opposed to some movies even if it has a very stretched out second act. The theme is also very strong in this film. Rage begets rage. It's translated very well through both our protagonist and antagonist's actions only to be halted by the death of both Omleth and Fjolnir. I also really like the score. A record label called Triangle produced the music and I have no idea who any of these artists are, but I feel like they invoked the vibe they were aiming for. I like the throat singers, that's some major dune energy, and I really like the woodwinds and horns, all solid. All the acting is really good in this. Alexander Skarsgård has taken it upon himself to deliver the best performance to his ability. I don't think he's by any means a fantastic actor, however, he does a solid enough performance in this that never took me out of the immersion. His character is someone who has done horrible things under the curtain of vengeance and survival, but I like how this movie never portrays him as a hero, solely the protagonist with which we follow. I also really like how he's called the bear wolf, considering he's built like a fucking bear but hunts his prey and strategizes not dissimilar to a wolf, like howling in the night or stalking his prey much like a wolf in sheep's clothing. I don't have too much to say about her or her character, however Anya Taylor-Joy delivers another great performance that undoubtedly solidifies her as one of the best actresses in the game. Clay Spang is exceptional in this movie. Every movie deserves a solid villain and Clay's completely delivers. 
There were moments where I felt hatred than sympathy without those emotions overshadowing the protagonist's main goals. His character reflects someone born under the cruel rules of this world, and so his mentality and reactions felt genuine and legitimate, regardless if our protagonist wants him to suffer. Nicole Kidman just had to flex her fucking acting chops in this. She plays one of the most despicable characters I've ever seen in a film and I love her for that. She has one scene, and if you've seen the movie, you know what I'm talking about where she's just acting circles around Alex Skarsgård. It's great. Ethan Hawke and Willem Dafoe are unfortunately not in the movie much, however, any scene with Willem Dafoe he just absolutely robs from everybody else. I'm not that familiar with Ethan Hawke's works. Call me a fake film bro if you will, I just haven't seen many movies with him in them. However, comparing what I have seen him in, I can clearly tell what he puts his heart into versus what he's either phoning in or when he's being poorly directed. I really like the relationship Amleth has with Fjolnir's youngest son in this. It isn't a strongly developed relationship, but you can tell he sees a bit of himself in the boy, which makes the third act that much more heart-wrenching when he has to kill him in self-defense. I also found Amleth and Olga's relationship well developed. This isn't a love story by any means, however, the chemistry felt real. I know that's extremely subjective, but I don't know what to tell you. It felt like they really cared about each other, had their best interests in mind, and were willing to make sacrifices for each other if need be. The ending is very impactful as well when he chooses to go after Fjolnir to protect Olga and their children from his wrath, knowing he may never see them again. Now, as much as I really enjoyed this movie, I don't think it's Egger's best movie. That title for me still belongs to The Witch. The Northman has some flaws ranging from gargantuan to nitpicks, so let's get into that. No! Oh! Hold on to your butts, but I found the fighting at times kind of lame. I can tell the stuntmen were intentionally not hitting each other in certain scenes. The action scenes also have some sick one-shots that can easily distract. Like this scene for example. What are they doing with their spears? Where are the bow and arrows? Also this guy's not hitting the body, like, at all. I think the slave boat Omleth stowed away on would have some kind of record as to how many they have. Kinda contrived since this relies on everybody else being fucking idiots, but I will let this one slide. For a slave, Omleth is certainly able to sneak out a lot and do basically whatever the fuck he wants at night, as if there wouldn't be guards watching over the slaves to make sure no insurrections occur in the middle of the night. There are also a lot of moments where Omleth is extremely lucky he isn't seen while sneaking around. He's clearly making noise like sheathing a sword or opening a door wide the fuck open, but the character he's trying to hide from doesn't notice him. I also don't understand the arctic fox boys he's supposed to follow. Maybe the foxes have some importance in Nordic mythology, if so, feel free to fill me in in the comments below and I'll admit I'm wrong, but I feel like the animal guides in Robert Eggers' previous works were better incorporated into the plot. Like one of the foxes just starts barking at him then runs away. Why is his first instinct to follow it? Why isn't he like, huh, I should probably be more sneaky if this fox can notice me? I'm just curious since Omleth following the fox is what leads him to the witch that communicates with Hymir. It's also extremely convenient the sword he's gotta get is located super close to Fjolnir's village. Like it's really contrived he doesn't have to go on a complete different odyssey to go get the sword that the witch tells him he needs. Oh this legendary sword you need, it's only a few miles that way, what the fuck film? Or the fact that Olga is still alive after Omleth returns and gets his shit kicked in harder than Fantastic Beast 3 did at the box office. <laughs> Like, Fjolnir threatens Olga and she even insults him, however, she's just okay after Omleth is strung up. I feel like she wouldn't be safe after this point, let alone safe enough to carry him out of there. Omleth mentions he and Olga can escape Iceland via his kinsmen, but they just show up the very next scene. How did they get there? Did Omleth send a raven or did he just fucking yell across the ocean? Definitely could have added an extra scene to explain this. That being said, I do really like this movie. Like I really like this movie. I didn't get what I thought I was going to get from the trailers, which I think is a credit to the art of trailer making, but I was thoroughly satisfied by what I saw. One might even say the movie subverted my expectations. Robert Eggers remains one of my favorite directors, and I really look forward to what he plans to do next. Go watch this movie. I think this is exactly the kind of movie we need more of, even if it isn't flawless. I really want this movie to do well because it deserves the praise, it deserves the credit, and it deserves a sequel. <laughs> I'm just fucking with you.